and we are live welcome everyone it is uh july 17th monday night uh eight o'clock eastern standard time it's time for the blabber so i am of course your host rev and i'm super happy today to be talking to one of the um newer streamers that i've in the last couple of weeks really gotten to know and really really enjoy watching rock and rage of twitch.tv slash rock and rage rock how you doing today buddy uh I'm doing great, Rev. Thanks for having me, man. So and we were... We are live. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. It is... Uh... I forgot to mute my stream. I am embarrassed by how often that happens. I'll give you a hint. It's pretty much uh -oh. every time I go live. Oh, great. Hey, good stuff. Yeah. So we were talking... <laughs> I feel like we already started the palaver like 10 minutes ago because... Right on. <laughs> we... <laughs> Thanks, May. Maybe says hashtag pro streamer. Um, we... Uh... We, we, you know, I, there's a little bit of setup phase before I go live, and uh, that's usually during the little loading stream there. And uh, Rock and I had already started talking, and I feel like we've already been streaming for 15 minutes. Yeah, right, right. I, I'm glad to see that my friend Loina is not here because we were sitting there and talking about the joys of getting older. <laughs> I think we were talking about going gray, our receding hairlines, yes, and. Yeah, yeah how bad our eyesight is. Yeah, we covered all three of those. But you know what we didn't talk about? And for me, what is is definitely more uh, a sign of, of uh, the aging thing is, uh, how's your hearing? It's not so good these days, man. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. A lot of years of listening to loud music and, you know, working in a factory, it, it'll take its toll, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I went to a couple too many Metallica concerts when I was younger, oh, yeah. and I was like, earplugs? <laughs> what am I? Like, you know, I don't need those. Come on, man, I gotta feel the rock. Yeah. And then you wonder why for the next four days you just hear... Oh, dude. Yeah, well, you know, and this is something that I don't think I've shared with you yet, but I've, I've been... Um, a musician since I was 15 years old. So I've been on a stage since I was 15, right? Okay. And so there was, I don't know, there, you know, up until about 15 years ago, um, you know, you're just using the floor monitors on a stage and you're just blasting all that noise in your face day in and day out. And about 15 years ago, I pulled the plug and got in-ear monitors. And I'm just thinking, man, if those would have been around 30, 35 years ago, my hearing probably would have been a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, you know? uh, I, I know, I know. I mean, I'm not a musician, but uh, you do think to yourself, like, God, why was I stupid when I was younger? I know. And then you even, you even have the older people who are like, you gotta, you gotta take care of your hearing, or you gotta watch out and take care of your back, or you know, whatever. Yeah. You gotta save her for retirement. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Uh, mm. money. Let's not go there. Yeah. Okay. Um, God, yeah. yeah, my wife, um, my wife makes fun of me now. I, I, I have tinnitus. Just, just now? Well, <laughs> never ending makes fun of me. Okay, all right. I, uh, I have tinnitus and, uh, someone taught me this little trick that you can do to help, uh, help you get to sleep at night if you have, if you have tinnitus, where you, you thump your fingers on the back of your skull. I don't know if you know yeah. this. Yeah. And it does work and you, you, you do it and, uh, it, it helps. And she la she laughs at me whenever I'm sitting there like boom 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 boom. boom. Like, you look like such an idiot. <laughs> Shut up! I just does it work sleep. for you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it, it's yeah. not it's not a cure, but it helps a little bit. And uh, yeah. you know, it always comes back. Sooner so, or later, right? I'm sorry. I said sooner or later. Yeah, yeah. sooner. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we also have we also had a little discussion about the. Fine, fine scotch that you're drinking. You want to tell yes. everyone what you're sipping on there? Yes, I got a little uh, 12 year old Glen Fittich. It's uh, just a splash of water. Uh, it's just a little trick that I learned from a from a, a buddy of mine who uh, is a bar owner, and uh, he said, you know, that kind of really opens up the the aromatics of the scotch and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, yeah, it's good stuff, man. And I noticed you've got one of those circular ice cubes in there too. Yeah, yeah, I do. I got, uh, so my, my kids got this for me for, um, I think for Christmas this last year. So I got, you know, the, the glasses, you know, it's made just for the ice cube and, you know, it's all snooty and, you know. It, it is snooty. It is. Snobbish, you know. 
But as I, as I was mentioning to you before we started streaming, I only yeah. drink good scotch when I drink um, because I drink so infrequently. And yeah, it, it, those little tiny things do make a big difference. And you drink your scotch the exact same way as me. I put in like a fingertip sprinkle of water and then I drop yep. in uh, one of those circular ice cubes. And that's, yep. that's... I don't have a nice glass like that though. I've got just uh, regular glasses. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. But yeah, oh. yeah. It's good Same stuff, man. So, um, Hazmat, so Matt is a, a good buddy of ours, uh, and you'll see him in, um, you'll see him in the Proper Nerds Discord as, uh, yeah. as Addykins. He is an army guy, and he noticed your hat, says army on it, and, uh... What's up, Hazmat? Yeah. Do you want to, you want to explain to Hazmat the, the hat? Yeah, yeah, cool, man. My, um, uh, my son is, uh, an army vet. He, uh, he did, uh, four years, um, he was, uh... Uh, in the big red one, um, was uh, a sniper uh, with the quarter calf. Uh, spent some time over the Middle East, and and you know, thank God, came home safe to us. Um, but he uh, he's in school now, out in Colorado, and uh, working his way through college. So uh, we couldn't be more proud, no question. Well, you know, um, I, I I think uh, you know anyone who who. Uh you know, chooses to serve, you know, deserves all of the respect or, you know, I, on the, on the red stream, the, the big ups, yeah, uh, I, right I, on, I could never serve. I have health issues. So I, even when I was 18, I knew, uh, I wouldn't pass the physical, mm. but, uh, when I had extra money and I used to donate to charities, there was only one charity I ever donated to. And that was the wounded warrior project. Right on. Um, but that right was on, when man. I had extra money. <laughs> Now. Well, you know, yeah, yeah, um, because well, the the thing that's nice about the Wounded Warrior Project is, uh, I people always talk about oh, supporting the troops, and it's like you can have political disagreements for why we're sending our troops here, there, or wherever, but the Wounded Warrior Project, it's like no, these are people who serve; these are yep. they, yep. you know, they need the help. And so I, I, yeah, yeah, and they made a conscious, they made a conscious choice decision to to serve our country, whether they even personally agreed with whatever was happening at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they certainly deserve our support. And, you know, those that get wounded in, in the, in, in the course of battle, you know, we, we need to stand behind them and take care of them. Yeah. And of course. Uh, it's, that's, it, it, in my opinion, it's one of the things I can't stand about our, I, I don't want to get, again, I don't want to get political, but it's one of the things I can't stand about our country is I feel like, these are the people who need the most support is our returning vets, our injured, our people who have PTSD, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these yeah, are, man. these are the true Americans, even, even the people who sit there and they come home and they're like, oh, that was the worst thing I ever did. I hated it. I would, I tell everyone not to, that's fine. They, but they, they served, you know, they, yeah. and everyone in America is allowed to have their own opinion and allowed yeah, to shout it as much as they want, uh, but I, I don't know. I didn't mean to get so heavy right off the bat. I'm sorry. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by, uh, Matt. We appreciate it. Yeah. So that's he's uh, he's Addykins in the Proper Nerds Discord. Which, by the okay, way, cool. uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Rock and Rage has just recently gotten his own Discord channel in the Proper Nerds community. So we're not a we're not a stream team like Team MZ. We're not you know we're not like a a team. We're just. Um, Bunch of people who have, uh, you know, st streams have their own channels in in uh, this Discord, and we got a great community. It's over fifty people strong and fairly active. Uh, if you haven't joined it yet, scroll down, click on the Proper Nerds Discord icon or the Connect icon. You can connect. But uh, yeah, you'll find uh, Rock and Rage has his own channel. I've got my channel, and then we also have uh, Tainted and Lusane have their own channel. So, and hello yeah, to cool. Katie the Turtle. Katie the Turtle. Katie the Turtle's awesome. She's uh she's one of my regulars. Um, I don't see her that much ever since I switched my streaming schedule to noon to four because ah she's a she's a proud mommy and she you know her schedule is much later so it's always good to see Katie around. Um, I I want to jump into the thing that I really want to talk about. So you okay. noticed that on Tuesday I bought PUBG. Player Unknowns Battlegrounds, and oh, I, I am hooked. I knew it, man. It doesn't take long. It just doesn't. No, 
And I, I, I've seen you playing a, a lot of PUBG. Why don't you give us your, what are your sort of just overall general thoughts on the game? Yeah, so so let me let me start here. So, you know, I've been gaming for a long time. And over the course of the last, I don't know, five, ten years, I've kind of gotten away from the first-person shooter. Uh, and I think I shared with you at one point, my uh, my reflexes just aren't what they used to be, and I can't keep up with these kids. And I'm watching all these people playing Overwatch and stuff like that, and they're running around shooting, and I just even just watching them, I have a hard time keeping up with that. Um, so, you know, I, I saw the PUBG thing, and uh, I was really intrigued by it. I'm like, you know what the hell, I'll, I'll check it out. And uh, so I picked it up, and, you know, the thing that I, that I love about the game is it, it allows you to play however you want to right so um you know if you want to get out there and you know stay away from people and be more about survival you can do that um if you want to land into a spot that's super spicy and just go for it you can do that too um you know i kind of mix it up a little bit i usually tend to you know stay away from you know big groups and and uh, just kind of try the survival route and pick guys off as i come across them uh, but man, it it uh, it hooks you and it hooks you it hooks you fast. There's I, no doubt. I've also noticed it's not one of these games like you mentioned Overwatch, and I played Overwatch really pretty solid from beta through the launch, and for about eight months I played Overwatch pretty solid. But Overwatch is a lot of constant fast reaction Twitch yeah. gaming, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't mean Twitch TV; I mean like react Twitch reaction. Right. Right. Whereas you do have that in PUBG, but there's also a lot of, like, strategy. It's like you'll hear someone, you know, moving around the building, and so then you know that you have to be ready to react at a moment's notice. It's not, right like, that constant. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super spicy. That's right, Katie. <laughs> yeah, I... That was that was another thing we were talking about is uh, that's a, both both uh, both Rock and I have a tendency to do this uh, to reach. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what's oh, that say? What's going on over here? <laughs> yeah, I, I I've I've really gotten into the point with PUBG where I've noticed that I do a lot better if I land in a secluded area that's got five or six buildings. Yep, and I can take the time to sort of scavenge a little bit and then go from there you know uh because i'll be i can approach a new town as i'm running from the blue zone of death and um <laughs> i'll say okay i see a bunch of buildings that have doors open so there's someone nearby and you can kind of you know drive in and bail out of your car and then like go to a wall and you know listen for shots and look in windows and yeah it, it, it lets you it lets you approach the it lets you approach the fight on your terms mm -hmm. sometime not always but you know you can you can kind of look at it and set it up and go into that the way that you feel the most comfortable yeah well I'd say you probably know? about 50 percent of my deaths are I'm running I'm running I'm running and I'm dead just or or you're parachuting into the military base and you get shot while you're trying to land. One time that happened. <laughs> One time. That's a classic clip. I love oh. it. No, yes, Court Trapson says, no, you can't bail out. That's true. I've made that mistake more than three or four times where I'm like driving along and I'm like, oh, I'm going to bail out and start shooting. And I, Oh, yeah. I bail out and then you run over yourself with the car. Yeah. Yeah, I did that once with a boat. I, you know, and I was thinking, that's the boat. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm fine, right? And I, when I pulled up near the beach and jumped out and, the boat just kept sliding up and right on top of me. So that was good stuff. I was kind of wondering about that. Like, when you bail out of the car and die instantly, is it that the car runs over you, or is it you're going 80 kilometers an hour and you hit the ground, and that would be like hitting the ground at 80 kilometers an hour? I, I think it's probably both, depending on the situation. I've certainly had times where the car there's no question that the car i jumped out and the car hit me mm -hmm. uh, but then there's been times where i've jumped out because i'm going so fast or i you know didn't slow down enough and you know you hit the ground you know going that fast and well, it's gonna kill you yeah katie says uh yeah. landing on roofs is her top way to die someone always lands a second before and ends up putting a damn shoddy in her face yeah that that's a that's a good like especially if you're going for the school and then you you bail out and you're you're racing for this and then you look your shoot pops and you look around and you're like uh eight nine ten eleven twelve okay this is gonna be fun 
This you, is going to be spicy. You land on the roof, you see a gun, you run over to it to pick it up, and it, you, you hit the button, but then there's someone else there, and you're like, oh, I, I didn't get it. And then you oh, turn yeah. and start running, and blam, you're dead. Oh yeah, yeah. I've 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 had some uh, I've had some situations where they, this worked out for me, where I was the first one to it, and where I either took the guy. But I've had the situations where you know I'm trying to load up a shotgun, and the dude's just pummeling me and kills me with his fist while I'm trying to load the damn shotgun. Uh, yeah, that's got to be embarrassing. You're like, I've got a shotgun. Can you just give me one second to click, put the shell, click, put the shells, yeah. in? and he's just blam, jump punching you in the face. And then I have to look over and think, oh shit, I am streaming. Oh god. <laughs> I don't. I don't worry about being embarrassed on on stream anymore. I mean, I just. I assume you know. I don't care if people see how bad I am at this game. I got second place. That's my. That's my highest. That's how stand. This is. That's. I've been playing it for a month and a half, two months. That's the best I've done in solos. That's the best I've done is is second place. So, that's that's pretty damn good. Can't. I can't quite get that. I've gotten into the top 10 a, a few times and I've only been playing for a week now. Uh, I mean, it was actually after last week's Rudd's Palaver uh, mm. last Monday that uh, Taintasaur convinced me I had to buy it. So I went and bought it and uh, so I've been playing it for a week and I'm totally, totally hooked on it. And uh, yeah, I, I got in the top 10 a couple times solo and uh, got like low teens a couple times but yeah I, you can get, when you get down to that last couple like there's three or four people left and there's you know maybe a hundred feet of of space yeah. it gets tough man yeah the nerves get going too you you know start getting all sweaty and that's uh that's good stuff now, the next thing we got to do is get you to uh, play the game with the steam controller though you bought that steam controller i did i bought this yeah, on your I bought this on your um, suggestion. It's been on my wish list basically since it came out. Um, I have an old Xbox controller, uh, yeah. like an old one. Uh, mm -hmm. th it works perfectly fine, but this stick here, it's yeah. real finicky. It basically, it doesn't work in anything except like to go left. I have to jam it all the way to the left. You uh, can't find. You can't so find I, it, yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I love the Steam controller. Um, I, you know, I get a lot of crap from the keyboard mouse guys. Um, and I've mentioned this on stream before about using a Steam. I, I use a controller for everything I play. Um, and I've gotten a lot of crap about it because, oh, yeah, you, you know, you need to learn how to use a keyboard and mouse if you're going to be a gamer. And I'm like, well, you know, this is what I know how to do. And just shut the hell up. I'm, I'm an old guy. I'm going to do what I want. Um, but I, I don't find that at least with the Steam control. I, I did see a difference when I used to use an Xbox controller um, with my PC games. Um, I, I felt like there was, um, there was, it just wasn't the same. I, and I, I felt like there was a disadvantage as far as, as the reaction time and stuff like that in game. Um, but with the Steam controller, I, I just, I, I don't feel that, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've had some, a lot of really good finishes in PUBG. I don't think it holds me back whatsoever. So um, to hell with the naysayers. Well, I, I probably won't use the controller for PUBG. When I'm playing first-person shooters, and this goes back to my days playing, uh, like, the original Doom, you know, okay. uh, when yeah. I play shooters, I, I really like the keyboard and mouse. It's just, it feels more natural to me. But there are some games where you just, it feels better with the controller. Like, sure. if you've ever played any of the Assassin's Creed games, or platformers, like any Metroidvania-type games, like platformers. Yeah. Games, it it feels more right to be playing yeah. with a controller. Yeah, yeah, no, no, and that's you know I, I uh, I've been playing a lot of Dead Cells lately, mm -hmm. um, and matter of fact, they even recommend that you play that with a with a controller, because it just it it just works right, and you don't need you don't there's not a lot of controls that go with it. There's not a you know it's not like you got fifteen different keys that you have to trigger, so it just works right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just looking over at Katie's mention about uh, she got mowed down by a, a machine gun. I don't think I've ever seen a machine gun outside of this starting island in PUBG. I'm sure it's. I'm sure you can get it from the. Well, obviously she just it, said she got it from a crate. Yeah, I think there's a. I think there's, and I haven't seen it. I think it's an M249, but I think you can only get it from one of the uh, from one of the crates that drop from the the supply crate mm -hmm. that drops from the plane. But I think it's an M249. That's supposed to be a beast. See, crates are 
crates are a crates are a tricky situation because they're really a death trap. Um, yeah, man. They're uh, they're the loot in them is usually pretty good, but then sometimes yeah. you get something like a fifteen x scope is like the the thing in there. And honestly, I don't like the fifteen x scope. I've gotten it once, and it was like. By the time I got it, it was like I, I don't need that much magnification. Yeah, once you get late in the game, it's not going to do you any good anyway, right? Right, exactly. If you could get a fifteen yeah. x scope on a KR rifle, you know, early on, you could be like yeah. a sniping god. But by the time yeah, but... you get a crate, and it's yeah, I... yeah, I you know I've I've gone after crates twice. One was in a squad game. There were four of us. And uh, we we just got freaking annihilated. I mean, they just we got killed. People were camping the crate, and we got killed. Um, the other time I went after uh, it was it was off of the military base island. Mm -hmm. So just to the south, it actually dropped in the water, and it dropped probably four or five hundred yards off off the coast. And I was already tooling up the coast in a boat, so I took the boat all the way out there, used it to shield myself, and. I, I I think I got a couple of nice animal or what I got, but um, got a couple of nice things out of it. Nobody bothered me, which was kind of – it was way out there, so I, I, it doesn't surprise me. People, you know, they're not going to swim for it. So my, my Okay, so my biggest problem with the crates is I'll hear the plane coming. You know, I'll hear the supply coming, and it's I'm usually in a position where I can't sit there and just do this and look around in the sky and see where yeah, it is. Right? You almost have to sort of get a little bit lucky. Like, you have to be in a position where you can watch for the crate and have it drop not too far from you in order to be able to loot it. Generally speaking, what I do is, I'll, like, if, if I'm close enough and I've got a decent scope on whatever rifle I have, I will look at crates as an opportunity to try to get a pick or two on some someone who's going for the crate. Right, right, right. And yeah. it's, you know, if it lands really close to you... You know, that, that could be good. I mean, it could be a good opportunity if it lands really close to you and you can get to it before anybody else comes over to it. But it's not like everybody on the map can't see where the crate is dropping, right? Right. Well, yeah, unless they're like me and they're just like, well, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> Matt, Matt is upset. He missed most of the conversation. Just get a bike. Uh -huh, Those uh -huh. bitches go 150. Get to the crate in no time. Oh, they're fast. Katie, Katie, I, I, don't under I don't think you understand who you're talking to. I'm pretty sure Katie's on the Proper Nerds Discord. She may have, she may, she may not be, but uh, yeah, there are clips. All right, there are clips of both Rock and Rage and I and our experiences with motorcycles. We do some yes. fucking evil Knievel shit. Yes, yes, I've gotten to the point where the. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was playing last night. I wasn't streaming, but I was just playing, and uh, I, I was trying to just jack up the bike, man. And some of those mountain sides, it's like these really steep cliffs. Just trying to see what I could pull off with it, you know, just for the hell of it. I actually have gotten to the point <laughs> where I will go into some games because I've actually been playing it off stream, which is usually if I'm not streaming, I'm not playing video games, generally speaking. I've actually been playing it off stream and I'll drop into an area and I'll be like, okay, I just want to like get the feel for the lay of this land because I'm still yeah. kind of new and it helps to kind of like, oh, okay, well. If you land in the military base, you know, there's these weapons here, and I think that's also yeah. been something I've been working on that's been getting me a little bit better. Now, uh, Rep Sam, I actually played with on stream today. We did duos. He just bought I saw it. some of that. Yeah, he just bought the game uh, night before last, so he had played a total of three games before today. Wow. And he's already 100 times better at the game than me. So my question, my question, Rep Sam, is how did you finish in the last game of the day when you broke the stream away, Rev? How did he do? I, I actually had to end the, so we were doing duos. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, uh, when, when, I, when I ended the stream, he was kicking ass, and all he had was like a pistol and a shotgun. Yeah, it was great. And uh, I think he, he did message me about it later. He's like, oh, I got 11th place. Well, it's, dude. Yeah, after playing just for, for a couple of games, that was pretty good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he's young. He's got those he's got those young fingers, the young I like, know, man. Young hands, quick reaction time, but uh Yeah, yeah right. Uh. Yeah, he, so he says, uh, I got eleventh, I killed some dude who walked past me and then I got killed by an AWP. Uh, uh, 
Uh, KD says, well, I was uh, I was last one up last night in squads and was just doing donuts in the middle of a field while getting shot at. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um... It, it is it is a massively fun game. and you know the other thing too is on Twitch there are a lot of people playing it like I was looking for someone random to watch yeah. and I was scrolling 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 like I must have scrolled past 300 names and I was still getting results of people who had like six viewers yeah. you know you know how it sorts people by how many viewers they have right right right. Uh, yeah, no, I know it's it's it, you know it's nuts. I, I you know I, I basically it's the primary game that I've been streaming recently, and, and you know I was trying to mix it up and stream other games and and do that kind of stuff. Um, but I noticed that when I was streaming the PUBG, man, the people were coming to watch it, right? So kind of felt like you know if that's what they want to see, man, that's that's what we're gonna put on the screen, and it's not hurt doesn't hurt my feelings because it's fun to play. I was. I wanted to start today's stream with something new because I played all day on Friday. And so I started a brand new game that no one had ever seen me play, play before. I'd never played it. So I like doing those first plays live on stream. And I, I was playing for about 45 minutes when people started going, hey, how about some PUBG? I'm like, are you guys not enjoying this? Are you? And they're like, we just like <laughs> PUBG. And I'm like, got to give the people, people what spoken. they want. Yeah. yeah. But you were actually playing some... Uh, Possibly my favorite, one wow. of my top ten favorite games of all time earlier today. In, yes. It's not PUBG. I, no, is that, well, here, let me, so let me explain a little bit. I, when I started streaming, one of the things that I started doing on Monday nights was I was doing a retro game night. And, I, you know, I was going back and playing games like Galaga, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, um, just some games that I grew up going down to the local arcade and dumping, you know, a week's worth of paper out money into the machine in quarters and playing, right? Um, and I was having a blast doing it. And, you know, people were checking it out and stuff. But, you know, I, I kind of noticed some of the viewership was falling off. So I wanted to say, well, let's change it up and see if maybe some, you know, we can kind of change the um, the people that are watching on, on Monday nights. And, and uh, Portal 2, for me, hands down, is... Uh, Portal and Portal 2, best mm -hmm. games I've ever played. I, they just, they they fit into the um, the type of person I am. You know, very analytical. I like to look at puzzles and and do that kind of stuff. Um, and then just the weird humor that they have in the games. It just it fits me perfectly. So um, I I booted it up and you know I said you know I'm going to try this for a couple of Mondays, see how it goes. And I just downloaded some of the community maps. And uh, gave them a go. Found out I was pretty rusty because I haven't booted the game up in probably six months or so. Um, but uh, it's uh, just an amazing game. No question. I, I'm, I'm hoping there's a Portal 3 coming at some point. I mean, I, I, I thought about this. Like, so when they shifted from Portal 1, which again, when I first played Portal 1, that game was mind-blowing how good that... It came out of nowhere... It hit everyone with all these new concepts. Like, no one had ever made a game quite like it. And they, admittedly, they borrowed from another game. You know, that's fine. Um, and so when they came out with Portal 2, they had to introduce some new mechanics. Like the, yeah. the the floaty fields. I forget what they're called. Like, they're conveyor belts in the air. I don't know. I don't remember what they're called. The yeah, the, yeah, I don't Blue yeah. swirly fields. And, like, yes. the gel... And uh, when I first heard about that, I thought to myself, ooh, I don't know. I, you know, I liked just Portal just the way it was. But then I would play Portal 2, and I'm like, oh, my God, I love the bounce gel. It gave the game a yeah. whole new feel. And you almost have to think to yourself, well, if they're going to make a Portal 3, they're going to have to do something else. They're going to have to introduce a new mechanic, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can I, I know that there, you know, there still are several game mechanics that um, are in the original source files that have never been released. Um, but, uh, no, yeah, there it's, uh, you know, what are they, where do they take it from there? I, I almost would like to see them do some dig in deeper to the connections between Aperture Science and Black Mesa mm -hmm. and, and, you know, kind of maybe meld some, some more of those two worlds together, which would be, which would be pretty cool. Um, you know, I'd never played any of the Half-Life games until after I had played Portal 2, um, 
So it might be kind of cool, and and who know, you know maybe they do a maybe they do a Half Life three and and a Portal three, and they make it they bring the games together, right? You know, it's you know the, could be kind of cool. There's a there's a joke on the internet. Anytime anyone says Half Life three, Gabe <laughs> Gabe Newell automatically knows and pushes the date of the game back by <laughs> by a day, and so. Uh, Someone someone figured that out, and just combing through Reddit, they, they found all the mentions, and, like, just all the mentions on Reddit alone, the game's yeah. not set to launch until, like, the year 5,000-something. That sounds about right, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but you know what? Actually, it's a really interesting point, though. Um, Half-Life 3 is never going to come out, and uh, it, it will not, because Steam makes so much money as a digital content delivery service. Right, right. And... The money they make on games they put out is not even a fraction of 1% of what they make just selling games. So if they put out Half-Life 3 and it's not flawless, it hurts their sales. Like, yeah. people will be like, oh, fuck Steam, they sucked. It's just that piece of garbage that was half... So there's no incentive for them to actually do Half-Life 3, which sucks. Yeah, yeah, no question. And, well, you know, I just, uh, just read an article. I think it was... Um within the last week but valve hit they've lost two of their top writers in the last month mm -hmm. guys that worked on portal guys that worked on half-life they've lost they've, they've and they've moved on to other stuff so you know i don't know if that's you know they're you know valve is making that they're making that emphasis to move away from making games which i mean they haven't made a game in quite some time right uh i think um, league uh dota 2 wait yeah dota 2 was the last one and even that was like, really. I mean, yes, they made it, but it was, it was like a modernized version of Dota, right? It wasn't even. They, right, right. They bought the rights to the name Dota, and then they they took a look at the heroes that were popular in 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 the original Dota, and they sort of looked at League of Legends, and yeah, they kind of cookie cuttered that shit into place. Yeah, and, and to your point, I mean, Steam, you know, Steam is such a good business model for them, um, and, and I'm sure that, you know, the, the the business portion of, you know, actually putting a game together, um, um, their margins are probably better over on the Steam side, and, you know, they're just distributing the, uh, the, uh, the software, the digital content, so. And they're making a ton of money off of things, like they introduced uh, Steam Greenlight, where... Yeah. You know, unknowns, total unknowns who are now making video games using things like RPG Maker, Unity, all these different programs. It's getting to the point where anyone who wants to put in the time can make a video game. Yeah. And they put it up on Project Greenlight. And uh, if they sell if they sell a thousand copies and Steam gets 50% of that, you know, it's, uh, they didn't have to do anything. Steam, it, Valve didn't yeah. do anything. They they literally no. just provided a platform for someone else. Yeah, That's, absolutely. It's it's so yeah. It, it uh it's it's a really a losing proposition for Valve as a company to make games. It's there there's no there's no incentive for them to drop millions of dollars into a game uh when there is that risk uh i don't know how much you know about mass effect games do you have you ever played the mass effect series i i have not i mean i'm, I'm aware of the games but i've never played any of them okay uh mass effect andromeda came out recently and uh it was uh developed by bioware produced by electronic arts and um the mass effect trilogy before that immensely immensely popular game and so there's a lot of hype about around mass effect andromeda they didn't call it mass effect 4 because it's separate from the original trilogy. It's it's its own its own game, its own universe, its own storyline. It's only very loosely connected to the first three. Just like shared history, basically, is it. Gotcha. And uh, it flopped. It flopped bad. Now, they made their money on it, but uh, EA and Bioware have taken a massive publicity hit. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so anyways, um, and every time something like that happens where there's a massive game with a massive amount of hype that then gets this massive amount of pushback from the community because it's not right, it's not perfect, every time something like that happens, that just solidifies to, to Valve, nah, we should just 
Leave the Half-Life series alone. No, I can't. I cannot believe for a second that the gaming community would ever complain and bitch and moan about simple little things that, you know, could be wrong with the game. That would never happen, no. would it? No, I, I can't imagine. Uh, yeah. Holy crap. Uh, you know, I think, I, I think one of the cool things, though, that, you know, uh, about games like Half-Life and um, Portal... You know, Portal 2 has got a massive, massive um, community-based uh, puzzle initiative, right? So you can you can continue to play the game, and you can always get a different puzzle. It might not be a great puzzle, but some of these guys that are in, in the authoring tools are there. I mean, you know, they you know, you can still use Hammer and, and create, you know, using all the skins, all the stuff from in-game. Uh, and there's some people that have put together some really cool, um, really, really cool mods of the game. So you can, it's like playing a, a small portion of a full game. Um, and they've done the same thing with some Half-Life stuff too, which is pretty cool. Let you keep playing them anyway. Yeah. I mean, people are still playing the hell out of Skyrim. Uh, and really, yeah. if you, if you play Skyrim now compared to some of the other games, like for example, I've been playing a lot of The Witcher 3. Um, it, it The Witcher 3 blows away Skyrim on every single level except for one. And that's Skyrim has this amazing modding community. I mean, there are people who've created content that is close to the level of detail and interaction and quests and characters and NPCs and storylines as the original game. Like, that's how yeah. much people have put into this. You know, so... Uh, um, Anytime you can do that, where you can seamlessly integrate that modding community into your game, um, you really have the potential for an almost timeless game, in a way. Yeah, right on, man. It's good stuff. Uh, I don't know what Fort... Katie the Turtle says, is anyone looking Fortnite. at Fortnite? I don't know this game. Maybe she'll, she'll give us a link Never. and we'll check it out. Never heard of it, but I have hit a buzz ball, so... <laughs> I see that came up earlier. They're yeah. disgusting, but... <laughs> I'm not going to pull up the link right now just because um, a survival like Minecraft mixed with the tower defense. I love tower defenses. I, generally speaking, hate survival games. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know why, but most of those... I played Conan, uh, the, the recent Conan game that came out. That's like, everyone's like, oh, it's just a ripoff of Ark. And that was fun for a little while. Actually, I think I played it with Katie. Um... I think Katie and I actually were playing it. Um, I don't know. I just don't get into those types of games. Hmm. I, it, I, I don't have a lot of experience with, with a lot of those games. I, you know, I did. It's not really a survival game, but I, I got into, for a while, I was playing Creativerse. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you've played Creativerse at all. Um, I don't know anything you know, about it. it. Please tell me. It's it's kind of a souped-up version of Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Um. The, the graphics are just prettier for the most part. And they got some kind of cool different mechanics and stuff like that. But I mean, I got lost in that game for, I don't know, probably two, 300 hours. Um, Cause just, just building shit. Right. I mean, it, you know, give you a chance to just kind of escape the day and, you know, build cool forts and, you know, I'll like take you back to your childhood. Um, but uh, after a while it, in, in, you know, that's what I find with those kind of games after a while. It's like, oh, okay, it's the same thing over and over again uh, it's kind of wore itself out right yeah yeah uh and i i remember god what was it It was probably about close to six or seven years ago um there started to be this buzz around this game this one developer was making and everyone loved it it was like legos it was like you get to play legos it was called minecraft and so i checked out this game minecraft and at the time uh it was an alpha version whatever and Notch was like, if you give me $10, just $10, whatever happens with this game from here on out in the future, you will have the full version of the game, I promise, blah, 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 blah. I tried it, and I was like, mm, don't like it. And I've gone back to it, and I've tried it a couple times ever since. I don't get it. I, I, I understand the concept of it's like playing with Legos. You build, you can build whatever you want. To. Yeah. I, it's not for me. I, I, don't, I don't dig the, the survival. I will definitely look at Fortnite, uh, Katie. But yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not really super into survival games. I did like Conan, um, but that's because I like Conan. So, you know, it's, 
Yeah. Uh, Corp Traption actually streams Minecraft fairly regularly when she streams. She's a very sporadic streamer, but uh, she says she played Life is Futile for a while. It's arduous survival. One of the things that I liked about the Conan game is you set up your game and you can modify, like, um, if you think it's too hard to gather materials, you can just, it's just like a slider bar. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to increase the spawn rate of metal by zero, anywhere from 0 0.1 up to, like, a thousand times. Yeah. You know, or you can even make it even tougher and make it harder to gather and... You know, so there's a lot of custom uh, custom ability there that, that made it kind of fun, too. So if you wanted to, you know, create a warlord's base and have... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. An, you know, you could do that. I don't know. But I haven't played it in a while, so... I don't know. So, uh, obviously, we both love PUBG. Uh, yeah. Used to play the retro games. Uh-oh. I think... Did we lose Ro Oh, there you are. Okay. Sorry, you froze for a second there. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> Portal 2 and retro games and PUBG. What other games uh, do you do? You stream any other games or any other games on your radar? So, your greatest hits? Yeah. List? So yeah. So I I have been playing. You know, I mentioned earlier. I, I have been playing a lot of Dead Cells. Um, PUBG's been getting most of my time online lately. But um, Dead Cells, man. You know, I I uh, got into Dead Cells. Um, I don't know a month ago or so. It's, that one is also still in early access. It's it's kind of a Metroidvania type of deal, um, but it's just one of those games, man. The 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 developers they're doing it right. They've got a solid game. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, so I've been spending a lot of time with that. Um, you know, I've got a couple other uh, you know little games that I mess around with. I've got you know probably like everybody, I've got one of those stupid just time wasting clicker games that. You know, I'm during the daytime at the office. It's probably running on one of the office machines, and you know, it's just, it's one of those. Yeah, I, you too. I can tell. Oh no, I, uh, no, Realm Grinder is not running in the background right now. I swear. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I've you know I've got one of those um, that I've been playing. Um, I'm trying to think about you know what else I uh, what's the one I it it's another cool little time waster that I that I just got into. Gems of War. Um, Gears of War. No, no. I'm sorry. Uh, a bunch of my friends uh, in the Proper Nerds Discord uh, for a while we were all obsessed with this game called Gems of War. It's oh, like Gems of War. Yeah, it's like one of those match three gem matchmaking games. Okay. With with like a bit of Hearthstone thrown in, and then like a fantasy RPG element, ah, I gotcha. and uh, that was our obsession for about two or three months. And uh, oh. I think a lot of us have moved on. I know Core Traption and Hazmat still play it, and uh, still on that crack. <laughs> yeah, I know Reduxa and her boyfriend Corey <laughs> still play it pretty heavy, but uh, I think about half of us moved on. I got really sick of it because I got to the point where I was coming up against these people who had just these insanely good troops and it's like they must have spent a lot of money <laughs> yeah it's, it's one of those games where it's not pay to win but it's pay to skip like grinding yeah and like if you pay enough money you can skip a lot of grinding so yeah i, I lost a year of my life to game of war on on the on the mobile uh the mobile device and it's kind of that whole deal that uh you, know, you pay a few bucks here and there and you know all that kind of good stuff but i i've broke free of it man and i haven't looked back because it uh it chewed up a lot of lifetime that's for sure <laughs> now game of war is one of those games i knew to stay away from when yeah. any game that advertises before a marvel superhero movie and has people yeah. like arnold schwarzenegger yeah as their ever for a Kate mobile Upton, game yeah you're like, yeah. uh-uh, stay away, because that game is obviously raking in so much dough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -mm. no question. No, I know. It, it, you know, it's just a... I uh, didn't realize that until it was too late. And, yeah, what are you going to do, right? And Game of War had that one um, that one blonde famous Kate actress. Up, Kate, Kate Upton. Kate yeah. Upton. Yes. 
and the yeah the first commercial i saw for that and again i think it was before like a major motion picture like when you see an advertisement for a mobile game before a major motion picture that's a lot of friggin money oh yeah and it was like her naked in a bathtub <laughs> and then, like and then she gets out and she, like attendants put robes on her and then she's leading her. i'm like this is a mobile game like come on uh Oh yeah, they did. They had a spot in the uh, during the Super Bowl. I think two years ago, two three years ago, they had a spot during the Super Bowl. So you knew they were making some. They were making some bank on that game. People just, uh, you know, when I was playing it, I mean, there were guys that were spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, and it's mm -hmm. just like, first off, why, and secondly, where the hell do you get that kind of dough at? Well, some people have more money than sense. So, well. <laughs> uh, when I was playing Gems of War on stream a fair bit, I had one guy who was in, like, as soon as I stream would start up, he was there. The second I stopped playing Gems of War, he'd be like, all right, I'm going to take off. And he'd leave. And he told me that he got, like, so in, in, in this Gems of War game, when you spend money for every, like, $5, you earn, like, a, like a VIP point, basically. And okay. as you earn enough VIP points, or, so like, experience points that build up your VIP levels. And the higher VIP levels you are, the better just rewards you get. Like you get daily bonuses or you get access to shit that only VIPs get or things like that. He's like, yeah, my main account is VIP level 35, which is the max. And then later I went and figured out how much money it would take to get to that. And it's like yeah. $8,000. Jesus. That's crazy. I'm like, I'm like He's like, well, but I've been playing this game since it launched. I'm like, okay, so a year, you spent what the hell eight. Has that got to do with it? You spent eight thousand dollars on basically a mobile game in the last year. <laughs> and he goes, well, that's my main account. I also have an Xbox account, but that one's only up to level twelve. And then I figured that out, and I'm like, okay, and level twelve oh, is still looking okay. at eight hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, Jeez, just, oh, geez, man, it's nuts. Yeah, I, I you know, I want to be like, how about this? Don't do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. No question, man. My, my theory on, on free-to-play, those free-to-play type games is you should be able to play the game 100%, enjoy it, be able to play it, and not feel like you have to spend money in order to progress. And that's one of the reasons I did like Gems of War is you don't have to spend a, you don't have to spend a dime. You really don't. So I like that. But some of those mobile games... Um, you get to a point where it's like, like, for example, I hate any game where it's got energy and it's like, oh, you're out of energy. Come back in, in eight hours to play some yeah. more or spend four ninety nine and you can keep yeah. going right now. Those are the worst. I yeah. hate those types of games. Yeah, they're brutal. That's yeah. And you know, that, I think that's why, I, uh, you know, I, I started to make a uh, I started to make a pivot back into PC gaming after I kind of lost my mind with Game of War after a while and and because uh, I had you know, I had stepped away for a while uh, I was running all my games on a 2011 MacBook Pro and and after a while it, the old girl just couldn't handle it anymore um, she tried man she tried and I did some upgrades to her but she just she couldn't do it um, so you know I uh, I broke down and and you know bought a proper uh, gaming laptop and um you know started making that pivot into games that you know I, I don't mind paying up front you know 20 bucks for a game and and uh getting plenty of enjoyment out of that right well and the other thing too is there's a lot of really great games again and i'm not trying to plug on steam but just you know that you can get on humble bundle or gog or on steam or whatever that you can find for 10 bucks. A lot of times I'll see yeah. a game and it'll be 20 bucks. I'm like, I don't know if I want this game for 20 bucks. And I put it on my wish list. And yeah. then six months, eight months later, it's on sale for five bucks. Right. Pick it up. You know, I mean, I, I've got a bunch of games like that, that, uh, you know, they, they're amazing. I don't know if you've ever checked out FTL faster than light. I watched you play it. I haven't played it, but. If you're a sci-fi guy, it's one of those games. I bought full price, ten dollars, mm -hmm. and I've got almost six hundred hours played in that game. Oh, it's like, wow, how can you beat that? And that, and I always tell people, like, I go, I tell people, put it on your. If you're not sure, put it on your wish list. It goes on sale for seventy-five percent all the time. It mm -hmm. for two fifty. If you played it for two or three hours, you would have gotten your value. You know, like. Yeah, yeah, you'd be good to go, right? 
Yeah, but in my case, like almost 600 hours played for $10. Is it after that much time in game? Is it still fresh for you when you play it? Because I think it was just a, just a couple of weeks ago I saw you playing it on stream. Yeah, um, I still love the game. Um, okay. One, after about the four hundred hour mark, I had done pretty much everything that was in the game, mm -hmm. and then they released an update for it and put in a bunch of new content for free. Like if you oh, have beautiful. the game, you got it for free. Anyone who bought the game from then on got the new content. So then that gave me another hundred hours of content. And then somewhere after, or somewhere around hour 500, I started looking into modding the game. The game has a very active modding community, so okay. Um, one of the things I really enjoy doing now, and when I was doing on stream, is um, I disabled the rebel fleet pursuing you. So there's there's like a when you're playing the game, there's a time factor. You have to keep moving, and if the enemy fleet catches you, they can fucking destroy you. So you okay. have to kind of always be one or two steps ahead of them. And so removing that aspect of the game makes it a much more sort of slow, almost zen-like experience. And that's, you know, that, that almost gave it a new lease, you know? Makes the game uh, a lot know, easier, I, though. I, you know, I've, I've thought about picking it up. It, it comes up in my suggestions quite a bit, because I, um, I play RimWorld and uh, Oxygen Not Included. Um, so those are... At least from what I mean, you know how Steam will say, you know, this game is kind of similar to this game, right? So it comes up in my thing, you know, every now and then, but I just, I haven't pulled the trigger and maybe I'll have to do that now. Are you a fan of Star Trek at all, the TV show or the movies? I may have seen an episode or, oh, okay. all, or all of them. I tell people that uh, FTL is the closest I've ever gotten to playing a Star Trek style game that I actually love. You know, uh, really? but if you're not if you're not a big fan of Star Trek, no, maybe that's my yeah, favorite. no, I, I yeah, there's, I there's probably isn't an episode I haven't seen or a movie I haven't seen or a line I can't quote from most of the movies. So, oh, you were being sarcastic when you said you've seen that's an episode. That's what that was. Yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. Went right over my head. Sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, uh, that's and, funny. And I'm the one that's drinking. Yeah, yeah, I'm just dumb sometimes. Kurt well, brings up Astroneer. That's another one of those games where I almost bought it. I, I was this close to buying Astroneer once. And yeah. I said, you know what? It's, I'm going to hold off for a little bit. And I'm glad I did because the more and more I watch of it, the more and more I realize, you know, it's just another one of these survival crafting games. And yeah. um, you yeah. mentioned RimWorld. I actually got from one of the developers, he sent me a beta build at one point. Oh. He goes, you know, because I can't, uh, I'll do that. I'll contact the developers of early access games and I'll say, I'm a streamer. I'd love to play your game on stream. It'd be good, you know. And yeah. uh, some people, some people do, some people don't. Um, but yeah, the developer said, I'll give you this copy. You will not be able to update it. This will be just this version. If you like it, please support us and buy it. And I played it for a bit and I, I liked it, but um, I don't know. It's brutally tough. Yeah, well, you know, I, you know, I kind of like that about the game, um, and, and I still, I still, I haven't played it in probably a month, month and a half, um, but I, you know, I was still kind of checking in with it. You know, they they did the big update where you can move to different parts of the world, right? So it's not just your little map. You can, you know, you can set up a caravan and go to other parts. And when they did that, it just, it, I don't know, it just kind of lost me when mm. when they did that. I was like, I don't, I don't really get why I want to go and do that. I just have more fun building the base and shooting the bad guys when they come to, you know, try to burn down my uh, my village and, and do that thing. But, I, you know, I, I like it. I always get to the point where it was like, just when I'm starting to get decent, like, I feel like, okay, I've got I've got my food, I've got my comfort, I've got my heat and, and temperature set. Yeah. I've, I've even got some base defenses for when the raiders show up. Then, like, all of a sudden, like, something crazy will happen. Like, that unicorn monster will show up and just... <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Come like, on. Well, I know, but if you can actually kill them, they're good eating, and you can make some nice clothes out of them. Yeah, or or, or <laughs> I think another thing that happened was, like, everything was fine. Everything was going well. I was doing great. And then all of a sudden, like, one of the couples that were in a relationship, they had a fight, <laughs> and then they got divorced, and then the guy that was, like... The, the, the ex-husband would get insanely jealous because his ex-wife started having relations with another guy and then yeah. they got into a fight and then both of them were critically injured and then one of them died and then the husband the ex-husband lived but then he was all fucked up he was constantly throwing panic attacks and 
It's like, man, just losing that one guy, and then you didn't even just lose that one guy. You lost the other, and then no one wanted to talk to the ex-husband because, like, now he was great. <laughs> it's like, nothing works now. Nothing works. Like, just that one thing. The, yeah, the oh, fact yeah, yeah. that this couple got divorced, it was oh, very yeah. frustrating. I, you know, I've, I, I, and I'll never forget, I was in a situation, I, you know, I, had, a, I had a pretty decent base. I probably had uh, 12 guys or 12 people, you know, living in my base. Everything was running smooth. And uh, some marauders came in and decimated my entire crew except for one person. And that one person was the one person in my entire crew that the one thing they couldn't do was they wouldn't lift shit up and, oh. and carry it someplace. So what they that, that that was the one thing that they wouldn't do. They just you know obviously they were just too good for that. Um, but uh, luckily, they were very charismatic, and uh, I able I was able to get them to take a prisoner, talk him into sticking around. And, you know, sooner or later, a couple of wanderers came in and rebuilt the entire community, which was kind of cool. I actually enjoyed that. I mean, it sucked, but, you know, it made the gameplay interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like, I, I, I think I will definitely check that game out again, and maybe I'll even check it out on stream at some point in the near future. When I first started really getting back into stream, well, I... I shouldn't say getting back. When I first really started streaming, that was the go-to game. I'd play that for six hours in one clip mm -hmm. on stream. And I, wow. Yeah, I would have like music playing. Uh, it's it's. Oh my god! I just looked at the time. It's eight fifty-six. Rock. Do you remember <laughs> me saying the time you know, flies? I know, dude. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe it. We've only got like four minutes left, and we got to wrap this up. Is there anything? Let's let me just take a moment here. And just say to everyone, thank you very much for stopping by. Please, please, please make sure you check out twitch.tv rock and rage. That's rock underscore letter N underscore rage. Uh, you can also find him on uh, Twitter uh, as rock and rage gaming, no spaces or underscores. Um, truly, truly someone I really enjoy watching. Um, I just, I, I really do enjoy watching you when you stream. It's a, uh, Oh, thanks man. I appreciate that. You have a very good, pleasant demeanor. And uh, you, you seem to add commentary just right for my tastes. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you'll be yeah. running along, running along, running along. Someone's shooting, and you'll be like, whoop, getting shot at. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Captain Obvious. <laughs> um, was there anything else you wanted to bring up or address before we run out of time? No, here? you know, I, I think we're good, man. I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, certainly appreciate the proper nurse. Thanks for bringing me to the family. Um, looking forward to, to growing with you guys and, and uh, having some fun, man. That's what it's all about, right? It is. It is. You know, it's real important that uh, we keep in mind that, um, you know, us small streamers, we're not we're not the people that have 2,000 viewers when we go live. You know, we are, we're not making a living doing this. Uh, right, right. And it's, so it's important to remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong, you know? Right on, right on, yeah. So, Otherwise, why would you, why, you know, why do it, right? Right. Um, so, uh, Geekonomicon says, welcome to the fam. That's right. Yeah, so those of you who aren't aware, uh, once again, I am just going to plug again the Discord. You can find the Discord link down below in the blah, blah, blah. Uh, click on the Proper Nerds Discord icon. It'll take you right to our server. You can uh, see Rock and Rage's uh, Discord channel. I have my own. Lesane and Taintasaur are the other two streamers that make up the sort of very active streamers on our uh, in our community, but we also have a lot of smaller streamers too, like Hortraption, who uh, when she does stream and she goes live, her her you know that gets announced in channel too. Um, and we have a great community. It's uh, I think like over 50, 55 ish people now who are who are hanging yeah. out and talking. And we just in some in some weird conversations sometimes. Yes, I think there was yeah. a long discussion about <laughs> vagina today. So there, yes, there was. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, good stuff. It is what it is. So um, <laughs> we're gonna have to go ahead and wrap it up here. We are coming right down the line. So if you Rock and Rage, if you have never watched a Revs Blabber right at the end, I have one thing I like to do. One thing I like to do to all my guests, and I always hope that they don't know this is coming because that makes it so much the better. We're gonna do this, and then we're gonna say good night to everyone. And what we do is this, Rock. You get the last word. What's the last word, buddy? Enjoy your burrito. Enjoy your burrito. Good night, everyone. <laughs> oh, that was good. That